After a scorching hot start, the Leafs had a... Lackluster? Should we say lackluster? Yeah, let's go with that. Lackluster week to cool off. Put on the bright side, MacArthur's still playing great. Welcome to the penalty box! week. Let's start this off with the return home to face the New York Islanders. Leafs lose 2-1 in overtime against Dwayne Rolison. And this game was chock full of controversy. Matt Molson opens the scoring early in the second period with a sweet move, sneaks one past Shiger, 1-0. A few minutes later, the Leafs answer back, and here's where the controversy starts. Chris Versteeg corrals a bouncing puck off of the shoulder of Dwayne Rolison and fires it in, uh, no goal. It was ruled a high stick. The ref behind the play thought Versteeg's stick was above the crossbar. It looked kind of borderline to me. In a video replay, the stick looked like it was about level with the crossbar, and if it's that close, that's a call you shouldn't be making. Either way, the goal's called off, and Chris Versteeg is once again held off the score sheet. The Islanders continue to keep the Leafs off the scoreboard until midway through the third. Colby Armstrong fires one past and... Oh, of course. Called off again. Now, I was outraged at first, but looking at the replay, they never crossed the line. Bounce around the crease and no goal. With Versteeg's called off goal, there was a case, but not with this one. Less than five minutes left in the third, Kessel rifles one past Rolison, and we're off to overtime. And a few minutes into the extra frame, Brett Lebda bumps Rolison in the crease and takes the goaltender interference call. And I gotta say, really? On the replay, yes he was in the crease, yes he brushed against Rolison, but he got out of the way quickly, he didn't interfere with Rolison's ability to stop the puck, but off he goes to the penalty box. And on the power play, the Islanders put the game away with a one-timer from John Tavares, there's the game. And what hurt most about this game was that the Leafs completely controlled it start to finish. Dwayne Rolison faced 30 shots, stopping 29, while Jaguar faced 20, stopping 18. Can't blame Jaguar on this one. I mean, Rolison just seems to be on when he's facing the Leafs. Moving on, the Leafs pick up their second loss of the season, first in regulation, in the grudge match against the New York Rangers. Now, I think everyone expected the Leafs to win this one. Except for maybe the Rangers. No Drury, no Gabrick, and the backup Biron starting for Lundqvist? Psh! But the Rangers came out hot. In the first, Ruslan Fedotenko scored, followed up by Artem Anisimov, and the Rangers are up 2-zip after 20 minutes. And it stays that way through the second. Despite some sweet scoring chances for the Leafs, Biron stands tall. Midway through the third, Clark MacArthur shot is start by Martin Biron, but right on the doorstep is Colby Armstrong, and Potts is first in the blue and white. And hey, look who's back on the score sheet. Good old Clark MacArthur. But in the end, that's where the score stayed. Leafs got some huge opportunities, including a breakaway on the power play in the third, but Biron just came up big. He stopped 24 out of 25 shots for the win. But hey, it wasn't just the goalie for the blue shirts that was amazing this time. Gustafsson stopped 30 out of 32 shots. That's right, we were outshot 32 to 25. The Leafs were lucky this was a one-goal game. And on to the biggest and most painful loss of this young season, the Leafs lose 5-2 to the Philadelphia Flyers. Mike Richards, scoring his first of the season, starts things off in the first, firing one pass Shiguerre on a brutal Francois Beauchemin turnover. The Flyers go up 2-0 in the dying minutes of the first, Billy Leno trickling a shot past Shiguerre through traffic, and they have the 2-0 lead going into the second. Phil Kessel answers back for the Leafs, flying down the right side, he snipes one past Boucher, and it's a one-goal game. Later on in the second frame, Versteeg tries a cross-ice pass to Bozak. That goes nowhere. And on a two-on-one, Blair Betts beats Shiguerre. It's 3-1. But the Leafs would answer back as Commissarek stops a Flyers clearing attempt. His dump-in finds Clark MacArthur, and he would score, scoring his eighth point in seven games. But 3-2 is as close as the Leafs would get as a clean-cut Scott Hartnell finds the back of the net early in the third from a cross-ice pass from Mike Richards on another 2-on-1. It's now 4-2. And just for another kick in the nuts, Danny Briere beats Dion Phaneuf to the puck. Brutal turnover, but he puts on a nifty deke and puts it past Shiguerre. It's 5-2. And that would be it. 
Good golly, Miss Molly. This is just an absolutely dreadful game all around. Except for goaltending. And how can I say that? Jaguar let 5 get past him. Yes, Jaguar did let 5 go out of 40. How many shots did the Leafs respond with? 15! And you're expecting to win the game getting outshot 40 to 15? The offense didn't generate much. Yes, they got some goals from Kessel and MacArthur, but we need to generate more scoring. You can't rely on MacArthur and Kessel to score all your goals for you this season. Bozak, Versteeg, Kuhlman, somebody's got to start putting them in. But out of everyone, the bulk of the blame for the loss rests squarely on the defense core. Brutal turnovers and ill-advised plays led to two-on-one rushes and breakaways for the Flyers, and I don't care who your goalie is, you give your opponent enough of those and they will score. Especially if your opponent was good enough to make it to the Stanley Cup Finals last season. Now after these three losses, I know some fans are starting to push the panic button. We're terrible! The season's over! And we don't even have a first round pick! To all the panicking Leafs fans, take a deep breath and chill. Look up there, the part where it says 4, 2, and 1. Not only are we still well within the upper half of the league, you only need to go 500 on the season to make the playoffs. And it's only seven games into the season. Remember when we were at this time last year? We had a grand total of zero wins. So calm the hell down. We will have winning streaks and we will have losing streaks, but we have 75 more games to play, plenty of time to work out the kinks. Anyway, the Leafs face Florida next, and I'll be seeing you next week. Go Leafs, go!